Theater presents Barbara Stanwyck and George Nader with Irene Dunn as hostess. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents It's Not the Money, starring Barbara Stanwyck and George Nader. And now, here is your hostess, Irene Dunn. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. A family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice. A practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, It's Not the Money, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Sarah and George Nader as Al. I'm coming, I'm coming. Well, what was your hurry, Lola? You got a key, Mr. Ned. What are you buzzing for? Oh. I like to stand out in the rain with my arms full. It's good for the sinuses. What are all them papers? Propaganda. Now, don't you mess up my clean front room with all them papers. Re-elect Judge M. Robert Johnson, friend of the foe. Hmm? Where does it say that? <laughs> it doesn't. I just made it up. Hmm. Friend of the foe. Uh, is my sister still here? She's upstairs dressing, going down to the bank. Oh, I'm going to count all her money, huh? No! Don't you put all them wet papers on my floor. Only for a few minutes. Why, you pick them up when you're through. Uh. Lola. Yes, Miss Sarah. Was that Sheila came in? No, ma'am. Just me, Sarah. Oh. Do you have the car, Ned? I do not, and I'm soaking wet to prove it. Uh, you want a sandwich or something? Any roast beef left? I gave it to Billy for lunch. Uh, Billy? Uh, only Cocker Spaniel on earth has never tasted dog food. Oh, we got some pork butt left. Okay. If you can clear it with Billy. With cheese on rye? Yeah. Oh, say, Lola, speaking of rye... I'm sorry. Uh, Miss Sarah locked it up. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? Re-elect Judge M. Robert Johnson so that Ned Lacey won't starve to death. A worthy cause. I'm home, Aunt Sarah. Be right down, Seal. <sighs> Hello, Uncle Ned. Howdy. Did Jim call? Not that I know of. Maybe there's a message on the phone stand. I'll see. Lola, did Jim call me? No, ma'am. How's that sandwich coming, Lola? It'll come a lot faster if you want to get out here and make it yourself. <laughs> Strike the question. Ned, uh? who's Mr. Al Foltz? Never heard of him. He called here. Wanted to speak to some member of the family. Probably a salesman. How come uh, Jim's not going to the real estate closing at the bank? Is that what it is? Don't be so cute. He's the assistant plant manager. Shouldn't he be there? Well, I... I think he should be, but Aunt Sarah says that since they aren't buying the site he had in mind, it, it doesn't matter one way or the other. Ah. Your husband is going the way of all of us Lacey men. Driven and docile. Jim is not docile. Well, that's just because he's an in-law. Give Sarah a few more years, she'll get him. Uncle Ned, that's very disloyal. Aunt Sarah's your own sister. Mm-mm, you got it wrong. I'm her own brother. Yeah, her very own. Ask anybody. Pork butt on rye. Oh. Bring the plate out when you're done. Hey, Lola, who's getting all your money when you die? Oh, I got no money. Yeah? Here. What about those Spanish-American war bonds? Oh, go on <laughs> with you. It's almost 1.30, so we'll have to hurry. Be right with you, Aunt Sarah. I want to drop some cleaning on the way. Well, can't you have Lola call them? No, it's Jim's tux for tonight. It'll just take a minute. Yeah, uh, say, Sarah, hmm? did uh, the judge tell you about that little thing I have worked out to get the assessor's job? Hmm? Sarah, would you pay attention? Uh, what's this call from Mr. Al Foltz? He's a friend of yours? No, he's probably a salesman. Look, Sarah, about that deal I oh, have yes, with the judge. Oh, yes, yes. I talked I... to him about it. Seems like a bad idea. 
It's only a loan. The thing's perfectly ethical. It's not that. I just don't see any reason for it. The judge is certain to be re-elected. Why all this extra expense? Well, it's rather involved. Ned, I'm I... late now. Can't we talk about it later? Later? The election's tomorrow, Sarah. It, it's only $700, just enough to pay the folks who man the polls and rent some cars, buy lunch. But why must you pay for it? Because, technically, I'm the committee man, and I have this deal on with the judge about the assessor's job. Already, Aunt Sarah. Wait out on the porch, Steele. I'll be along in a moment. All right. And don't forget your umbrella. Now, Ned, let me be frank with you. I simply don't like this idea. How can you tell when you don't even understand? Steele? Jim! What are you doing home at this hour? Well, the bottling machines broke down. I had to drive over to Whitfield for a new part. Oh, darling, you shouldn't be messing around the machinery like that. You're an executive. <laughs> Quit kidding yourself. We know who I am. Now, Jim... I'm Sarah Lacey's niece's husband, and good luck. That's not so. If you wanted to, you could be running the bottling plant. You know what I want to do. Oh, please, Jimmy, let's not fight through that again. I had another letter from Bill Chapman yesterday. For $1,500, we could be in business. Some business. Air freight to Alaska. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of faith in me, haven't you? Oh, it's not that, Jim. I just think you'd be throwing away such an opportunity here. Shall we go, Seal? All set. Oh, hello, Jimmy. And Sarah? It's a shame you aren't dressed. You could come down to the bank for the closing. Oh, why don't you change, Jim? It'll only take a minute. No, thanks. I figured I'd just be in the way. What? Jimmy. I said I figure I'd just be in the way. Is anything wrong, Jim? Mm, no. No. Forget it, Aunt Sarah. See you later. Very well. Come along, Seal. Bye, honey. Don't forget, we're going to the club tonight. I won't. I wish I could. Anyone here? Just us galley sleeves. <laughs> Hi, Ned. <laughs> I thought you'd be out canvassing. Well, there's no need to. <clears throat> See, the judge is a shoe in. Yeah. I just got the word from Buford's first lady. That means no deal on that assessor's job? Yeah. Well, Sister Sarah just wouldn't take the bait. Mm-hmm. Say, will you just tell me once how come that stepbrother of yours decided to leave Sarah every dime of that estate? Now, to explain that, Jim, I would have to understand my dear departed stepbrother's mind, which I didn't. Yeah. Cliff, that is. Yeah, uh, Clifford. We never called him Cliff. Called him a few other things, never Cliff. <laughs> well, I've asked Seal about him, but she doesn't remember much. He was rich and ruthless, and in our youth he used to beat me up. <laughs> ah, customers. Probably Aunt Sarah forgot something. I'll get it, Lola. Oh. Yes? Is this the Lacey household? Yes? My name is Fultz, Alfred Fultz. Can I come in? Well, I'm not a salesman. Who is it, Jim? Uh, Mr. Fultz. Okay, come on in. Thanks. What can we do for you? I phoned here twice this morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, we didn't know who you were. The matter's kind of confidential. Are you a member of the family? That's right. Ned Lacey. Oh, yeah. How do you do? This is my niece's husband, Jim Houston. Oh, pleasure. All right. It's my understanding you've got a sister, uh, Miss Sarah Lacey, right? Yeah, you're right. Do you mind telling us what you want? I was coming to that. Uh, could we sit down? I'm a little tired and wet. Oh, sure, sure. You walk all the way up here from downtown? Yeah, I couldn't find a cab. There you are. Just make yourself comfortable. Yeah, thanks. Well, now, to get to the point, I'm... Uh, Self-employed. My business is to uncover missing heirs. People have got money coming to them but don't know it. People like you, the Lacy's. Uh, what do you mean, money coming to us? A legacy. A relative of yours has died and left you a considerable estate. Me? You, your sister Sarah, and your niece, Mrs. Uh, Houston, did you say? Are, are, are you kidding? Look, I spent the last two nights in a coach car, walked almost three miles in the rain to get here. I am not kidding. Holy cats, it, we're... How much is it? Plenty. Yeah, well, who, <laughs> who, who left it to us? Yeah, I'm afraid that'd be telling. What? Well, I told you I was self-employed. It's taken a lot of time and money, my time and money, to find you. I think that deserves consideration. Oh, why, sure. Sure it does. We'd be glad to pay you. Yeah. <laughs> how, how much do you want? My usual figure is 30%. 30% of what? The legacy. 
Yeah, but uh, we don't know how much that comes to. Well, what's the difference? Well, a lot of difference. If that estate is a big one, say $10,000, 30% of that is pretty high. Yeah. Well, if it was only $1,000, 30% is a different matter. Excuse yeah. me, am I to understand that you gentlemen would rather inherit $700 and $7,000? <laughs> I think you got something there, Mr. Folds. <laughs> yeah. You know that that is a point. Yeah, yeah then uh, uh, 30%, huh? A deal. Where's the money? Well, all in good time. As soon as I've got your three signatures on uh, this agreement, I'll disclose the location, the amount of the legacy. Your lawyers can handle the rest. Well, let's see. Let's see. Agreement is just thirty percent of all monies, properties, or chattel. Don't be pay. Let's see. Okay, I'll sign it right now. Jim, you get in the car and go down to the bank and get Sarah. Yeah, well, what'll I tell her? Uh, d that it's urgent. Uh, tell her that there's been a death in the family. Hello? Oh, no, no, Miss Sarah's not here, Judge. No, they went out to the club for dinner. Yeah, she said she'd be back about 10 o'clock. Ought to be along soon. No, she didn't leave any message. Lola, is that Judge Johnson? Oh, hold on a second, Judge. Yes, it is. Oh, I'm trying to get him all evening. Let me talk to him. Judge, uh, uh, Mr. Ned's here, wants to speak to you. Hold on. Here. Thanks. Hello, Judge. Say, listen, I want to tell you... Wait, uh, hold on a minute. Well, get lost, will you? What's all so secret? Do I ask you where you keep your war bonds? Now get lost. Oh, get lost. You just come around tomorrow for a sandwich, see what happens. That's all you oh, do. Oh, shoot, so shoot, shoot, shoot. Hey, judge, now listen to me. I'm all set on the money. Oh, a great thing has happened. A legacy, yeah? Oh, I don't know how much, but plenty. I got Wilson to go my note for a thousand at the bank, and I'm all set. Handle everything. No, no. Well, no, listen, this man who discovered the legacy is having dinner out at the club with Sarah and the kids tonight uh, just to soften her up. <laughs> I said he was an old friend, and they're going to tell her, you see, on the way home. Y yeah. Well, that's right, but don't say you talk to me. No, they've got to hang up. They just came in. Well, enjoy your dinner, everyone. That was hmm? great. I enjoyed it. And so did I, Mrs. Houston, very much. Well, I thought the steak was a bit tough, but tasty. Would you take my wrap, Jim? Yes, well, did you, uh, did you tell her, yeah. Mr. Foltz? Yeah, we had a very interesting discussion. But what? But Miss Lacey is not interested. Oh, Sarah, It's no. quite simple. I told Mr. Foltz that, frankly, I thought his offer was rather shady and that I didn't want to be a party to such an agreement. And that was that? Jim, I don't see what this has to do with you. I know, dear. It's your legacy. Thanks for reminding oh, me. Oh, children, children, there's nothing to quarrel about. Yeah, how do you know it isn't, Miss Lacey? I beg pardon? Well, how can you be so sure of what married people will or won't quarrel about? I think I know my niece and her husband better than you, Mr. Foltz. Oh, Sarah, what's this all about? You mean you won't sign that agreement? I have no intention of doing so. With all due respect to Mr. Foltz, his offer seems quite irregular. We don't know what we're getting or what we're signing away. Well, what possible difference can that make to you? You don't need the money, Sarah, but what about me and Seal and Jim? This is a matter of principle, Ned. If the estate is as Mr. Foltz describes it... It legally and rightfully belongs to us, all of it, not just 70%. That being the case, I find his offer highly unfair. Oh, uh, look, Miss Lacey. Yes? You mean you find it unfair in principle? Exactly. Well, then, if I asked for, well, 3%, you'd still reject my offer? I didn't say that. Well, then it's not a matter of principle, it's a matter of cash, isn't it? Not at all. Although I must confess, Mr. Foltz, that I feel you are rather too interested in money. No, oh, don't you make any mistake. Money is all I'm interested in. Mm, I'm not surprised. It's the only way I feel I can ever become a really good man. By piling up so much money that I, that I can afford the luxury of high principles. Oh, that's nonsense. Oh, no, no. I think money's a force for good. The more you have, the better you get. Have you ever noticed how easy it is for a really rich man to resist the temptation to steal? Mr. Foltz. Your case is an even better one. I come with what looks to you like a shady offer to make some money. But you already have a lot of money, so you can reject my shady offer on principle. I detect, Mr. Foltz, an undercurrent of irony in your tone that I don't altogether like. Uh, look, Foltz, what if I offer you 50% of my share? 
Uh, wouldn't that make up for it? Uh-uh, Mr. Lacey. You see, the sum involved is considerable. When you say considerable, do you mean over $10,000? Yeah. 20? More than 20. 50? Well, I'll be frank. I think I can afford to be. The estate comes to slightly less than half a million. What? Half a million? You're joking, oh. Mr. Foles. No, I'm not. Oh, Aunt Sarah, I've always done what you've told me, but, but I feel I have a right oh, to... Oh, please, leave. please. What none of you understand is that this man is asking us to do something quite unethical. Unethical? Sarah, every dime that stepbrother of ours made was squeezed out of somebody. That isn't true. Clifford was hard, but he fought fair. He was a bandit, and the whole town knew it. If he didn't have everybody right by the neck, he was miserable. And you've gotten more like him every year since he died. Ned, I won't listen to this. You're not happy unless you're running everyone's lives, telling them what to do. Oh, I'll get it. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hold on a minute, Judge. It's for you, Aunt Sarah. Thank you. Hello, Judge. Yes. Yes. You're sure? All right. Thank you very much, Judge. I hope it wasn't too much bother. Well. Now what? I've just learned something very interesting about your Mr. Foltz, Ned. Maybe this will give you some understanding of why I trust my instincts about people and mistrust yours. What are you getting I at? I think I know, Mr. Lacey. Your sister thinks she's uncovered something in my past. Quite right, Mr. Foltz. It took three long-distance phone calls by the judge, but we found out about you. Well, you didn't have to go at all that trouble. What is this? Miss Lacey is going to tell you that for the last seven years, I've been a convict in the state penitentiary. What? Do you deny it, Mr. Foltz? No, no. But the parole officer here in town could have told you the same thing. I reported to him when I got off the train this morning. See, I got no secrets, Miss Now, Lacey. just a second. I've just come here with a perfectly legal proposition. And excuse me, Sarah, but what difference if he is an ex-convict? The money's real enough, isn't it? There probably isn't any money at all. The man's a convicted swindler. Miss Lacey, if there isn't any money, how could I swindle oh, you money, out of it? money, money. It may have escaped you, Mr. Foltz, but there are things in this world of much greater importance than money. Such as? Integrity, respect for the law. Maybe those things are of greater importance, Miss Lacey, but to whom? That's the question. For example, now it's very important to you that I don't go around robbing banks, because you've got a lot of money in the banks. That all men are honest and upright. That's important to you, too, because you've got a lot to lose if they aren't. That's not the point. Oh, I'm afraid it is, Miss Lacey. I'm afraid it is. I've never seen it proved to the contrary. Love of money is the root of all good. Listen, Foltz, you mean to say we can't get any of that legacy unless all three of us sign? I'm afraid not. Your sister here would probably contest my claim on your share. The thing would be tied up in courts for years to come. Oh, Sarah, have a heart. Will you think of us I for... am thinking of you, Ned. You are not. Jimmy, please. I've been married to Seal for five years, and the reason I came to work for you and lived in this house is that I thought it would please her. I'm sure it did, and it pleased me, too. Well, I'm not so sure. If we give you any pleasure at all, it's the pleasure of ownership. If you can't own or control a thing, you don't want it around. Jimmy, don't talk like I'll that. I'll talk any way I want. I'm a grown man, I've got a brain of my own, and I'm sick and tired of being treated like a I poodle. I think I've heard enough, Jim. You and me, Aunt Sarah, and just to prove it, I'm getting out of here. Jimmy, you don't mean that. You can't leave me. I won't leave you unless you want to stay. Now, I'm going upstairs. Pack. And then I'm going to Alaska if I have to walk the whole way. If you want to walk with me, you're more than welcome. Goodbye. Jimmy, please, what's gotten into you? Why are you acting this way? I'll tell way? you why. Well, I didn't know he had that much gumption. Sarah, you want to know a funny thing? What's that? You've actually convinced yourself that you're not helping people unless you're pushing them around. I believe that's the unkindest thing you've ever said to me, Ned. Well, tell the truth, I, I rather hope it is. Well, good night, Mr. Foltz. I'll be turning in. Night, Mr. Lacey. I'm sorry. Better luck next time. It's the story of my life. Better luck next time. Good night, Ned. Good night. <sighs> well, I'll see you to the door, Mr. Foltz. Yeah, if you don't mind, there's something I'd like to ask you before I well, go. Well, it's rather late. It'll only take a minute. I trust you won't waste your time trying to persuade me to change my mind. I don't plan on wasting my time. Mm, well... This is something I could only say to you, since you're the party most affected by it. It concerns the will that bestows the legacy. Yes? Am I right in assuming that your refusal to sign the agreement giving me a share of the legacy is just a matter of principle? You are. In other words, 
If I were to give up my claim on the legacy, you'd have no objection to dividing it equally with your niece and brother. None, whatever. Except that I know you won't relinquish your claim, Mr. Fosse. It would be contrary to your principles. Uh, well, we can go further into this matter of principle after I show you something. What is that? A photostatic copy of the will bequeathing the estate in question. I'd like you to take a look at it. Aren't you taking a grave risk in showing this to me, Mr. Fosse? After all, once I know the identity of the person leaving the estate, I'll have no further need of you. Who knows? Look at the signature at the bottom. If you insist. Well, it's... It's signed... Clifford Lacey. You recognize the signature? Why... Well, yes, but this is silly. It's my stepbrother's, but... Look at the date on the will. October 17th, 1953. Last October? Well, this is a forgery. Clifford's been dead for eight years. He couldn't have written he this. He not only could, but he did. A month before he died in the state penitentiary. But... You're crazy. Clifford died in a plane crash during the war. On his way to Los Angeles. Yeah, I know that's what you thought. That's what he wanted you and everyone to think, especially a, a banking firm in New York. But he didn't die. He never got on that plane. He read about the crash, realized he had a way out. You're lying. There are medical records, fingerprints in the penitentiary. Of course, he served there under another name for a later crime. What? Embezzlement. I don't believe you. Miss Lacey, I couldn't care less... But the courts will accept this document because it's a valid one, as I'm sure your brother Ned will be glad to learn. Oh, it... It can't be true. Clifford would have gotten in touch with us, with me, anyhow. No, no, he was too ashamed of what he'd done. You see, you, his half-sister, were the only person who never saw him for what he really was, a louse. And if he lost your respect, he'd have had nothing. Well, then the... the estate in this will is... Exactly. Your estate. This house... The real estate, everything you've had all to yourself for these last eight years. Under this will, both your niece and Ned get one-third of it apiece. I'll fight this. And you'll lose. The will's good, good as gold. I was in the infirmary when your stepbrother made it. But it's impossible. No, no. No more impossible than it uh, would be safe for me to destroy the original copy of this paper and never mention it to the others. That is, if we, uh, you and I, could reach some agreement. Oh, are you asking me to bribe you? <laughs> let's, let's say that I'm just trying to find out the price of your principles. You seem quite sure they have a price. Yeah. Am I wrong? I don't know. I would have thought you were wrong, insultingly wrong, a quarter of an hour ago, but now... Let I... me tell you something, Miss Lacey. I admire honesty. I really do. I haven't seen much of it, I'm afraid, but I admire it. And I admire people who try for it. Now, if you really want to be honest, here's your chance. I'll give you a clear choice. In what way? You can call Ned and your niece downstairs and show them this photostat. That'll automatically deprive me of any claim on the estate, since I've got nothing to sell but the identity of the man who signed that original document. Or... Or... You can write me your personal check for $25,000, and I'll give you the original copy of your stepbrother's last will and testament. Twenty-five thousand. Well, that's not an unreasonable price. No, I'm not an unreasonable man. I could buy a lot with that twenty-five thousand. My niece and her husband would continue to live here, and so would Ned. They'd have to. I'd have all the money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I could buy quite a lot. <sighs> yeah. But I think from now on, I'd rather not try to buy things. That can only be given. Ned, Seal. Yeah, what is it, Sarah? Would you ask Seal and Jim to come down for a moment, Ned, please? Please? Yes, and you too, if you will. Why, sure. <laughs> well, you seem to have made your choice. Yes. I suppose you think I'm a fool. No, I think you're a wise woman. Guess I've been the fool I... Well, I underestimated oh, you. Oh, no. No, you didn't. You were right about me. And I want to thank you for the personal sacrifice you made to give me a clear look at myself. Personal sacrifice? I, I'm afraid I don't understand. Oh, yes. Yes, you do. You gave me two things to choose between, but you had a third. In fact, you still have. Ned and Seal haven't seen that document yet. You could sell it to them for a very high price, and I couldn't stop you if I wanted to. Uh-uh. No. See, that's the interesting thing about real honesty. I don't think I follow you. It's, well, 
Well, it's invincible. Why should they pay me for information you're willing to give away? Oh, you still have the will itself. Yes, but, well, it just wouldn't seem right to hold that back after what you've just done. You know, Mr. Foltz, hmm? I'm beginning to like you. Well, thanks, Miss Lacey. May, uh, may I say the same? Have, uh, have you any immediate plans? <laughs> Just put myself out of a job here. I thought I might look for work. Maybe at that bottling plant on the edge of town. I have a feeling you'll be well received, if you do. Well... Here we are. Yeah, what's up, Sarah? Is anything wrong? Why, no. No, quite the contrary. I've asked Mr. Foltz to stay a few minutes longer. He has something to show you. This is Irene Dunn again. We've been assured that this 20th century of ours is not a particularly family-minded century. And who knows how much of our trouble and of the world's evils stems from that. For many decades now, powerful forces of disintegration have been leveling their guns at family cooperation, at family unity, and family life itself. To restore the balance, of course, we can think in terms of legislation and of various social techniques, and, and we can and should study the problems indicated by juvenile delinquency and, and the results of totally materialistic education. But to begin at the very root of the matter, family theater urges us to begin with ourselves in our own individual families and to do something that we can all begin to do at once and that is pray, to pray together as families. Now, that alone may not change everything, but without that, nothing mere man can do will change anything. It's been true all through history, and it's just as true today. As Family Theater reminds us each week, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed It's Not the Money, starring Barbara Stanwyck and George Nader. Irene Dunn was your hostess. Others in our cast were Julie Bennett, Gail Bonney, Lamont Johnson, and Larry Dobkin. The script was written and directed by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present A Different Drummer, starring Robert Stack with Jeanette MacDonald as hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.